Hi, this is Dr. Tony Lamana. Today what I'm going to be showing you is technique for the kettlebell snatch, and we're going to be specific to uh, kettlebell sports style. There are some differences with hard style snatch technique, um, but we're going to be covering kettlebell sports style snatch technique today. And uh, this is a White Lion Athletics kettlebell project. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is, first off, let's talk about grip. So when you grip the kettlebell, you're going to grip with your fingers, okay? And then you're going to wrap your thumb around uh, either the first or second finger. For some reason, I can never get around the first finger, but a lot of people can. Maybe have a short first finger there. And so we're going to grab, uh, wrap our fingers. That's called a hook grip for kettlebell. It's technically a reverse hook grip because we know from weightlifting that we put the fingers over the thumb when we hook grip, but this is what we call hook grip for kettlebell. Again, you can call it reverse hook grip, but regardless, you're going to place your thumb over your finger, so that's going to be your grip. You want to make sure you don't hulk grip the kettlebell because it's not going to move very well if we're gripping it too tight. It's actually going to cause slamming on the forearm, and that's one of the things we want to prevent. So let's do the movement, and then we'll talk about a number of facets to the movement. So as we come up, and as we come down, okay, and again, what you're going to see when you watch kettlebell technique is you're going to see a number of different people do it just a little bit differently. But what I want to give you is I want to give you some key pointers that you can use, some key things that you can use to help develop your kettlebell snatch technique. Okay. Now, what you will see is that when I hike the kettlebell through the legs, okay, I'm going to hinge the hip back, right? But I'm going to, with kettlebell sport, we let the knees translate back a little bit. Rather than keeping that really hard vertical shin, we're going to let the knees translate back a little bit, and then we're going to kind of pendulum forward. So you get a pendulum swing instead of more of that hinge type swing. So while I will hinge backward, I'll allow the knees to translate a little bit, I'll drive forward, and allow the hips to move forward, creating a pendulum movement. You get a nice big arc, and then the kettlebell, as I punch through, I punch through right about at the 10 o'clock position right there, okay? Because I don't want to punch through here, it's going to slam, the timing's going to be off. If I punch through right about the 10 and let it glide back to where the arm is vertical, stacked, the wrist stacked over the shoulder, okay? We want to keep it, you know, it depends on your shoulder uh, thickness and width. Also your mobility, which you want to work on if it's not good. You want to keep your arm pretty close to the head, okay? as far as translation, right, because we don't want it to be out here. And again, nice and back. I always say behind the ear. That's kind of my standard, because you want the arm vertical with the floor in that catch position. If you watch my hand position, if you look here with the hand position, okay, you can see a couple things. One, I've stacked up real nice, but look at the angle of the handle of the bell. It's at about a 45 degree. You can see I'm not hulk gripping either here. It's a nice loose grip, otherwise I burn my forearm out when I'm doing high rep sets, okay? Now, when I come down, I don't like, you can flip it over. Um, it's not wrong, but I think it's a lot easier biomechanically on the shoulder to rotate the elbow forward. And as the elbow rotates forward, I let it drop. I let gravity pull it down. Now, it doesn't yank straight down. I let gravity pull it down and I guide it in a nice arc. So if you watch, I go up, I rotate the elbow forward, and I guide the nice arc. I rotate the elbow forward, okay, and I get a nice arc, and then a drive, okay? So, a couple of other things here. As I shift and I rotate the elbow forward, I re-grip. So you see I'm in the corner up here, right? I'm up in the corner real nice there. As I rotate, I re-grip, okay, and you can see where the hand has re-gripped, and it should be pretty well into the fingers, and again, try to re-establish that hook grip as I drive through the legs, or as I hike through the legs. Now, you'll see some variation on this as well. Uh, I like to kick the heel up, so as I go through the legs, I kick the heel up on the, on the opposite foot, and as I come up in the snatch, the toe comes up on this side. It's basically the hip pushing forward more on that side, same side as the kettlebell. Sometimes you just see a hinge and then the toe come up on this side. So the toe, you don't come up on the toe on that side. That's going to be a variation in style. 
And it's not, it's not specific to one person versus another. It really depends on what works best for you, okay? But some of the key factors are, some of the things we're talking about are how do we drop properly? How do we grip the kettlebell properly? How do we drive with a nice pendulum properly, okay? So those are some of the factors that you're going to want to work on. Um, if you have any questions on this, let me know. Stay strong. I'll see you next time.